begin, I want us to take a short pause to send our love to Nancy and Paul Pelosi. I've been on the phone with Nancy, arranged for her to be able to get from Washington out to uh, out to see her husband, Bobby, who says where he, she's in the plane now, heading out there. And uh, you've seen the news. He was attacked in their home, and uh, when I spoke to the speaker, she said that uh, he's doing okay. He went to the hospital, was operated on, and uh, he seems to be coming along well. Uh, he's in good spirits, and the whole family's there. While this invasion is ongoing, the, uh, the news reports indicate it was intended to be an attack on, Na on the house Nancy Pelosi lives in, the third ranking person in the United States in line to be president. You know, uh, it's reports that the same chant was used by this guy they have in custody that was used on January 6th in the attacks on the U.S. Capitol. I'm not making this up. This is reported. I can't guarantee it. I can tell you what's being reported. The chant was, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? This is despicable. There's no place in America. There's too much violence, political violence, too much hatred, too much vitriol. And what makes us think that one party can talk about stolen elections, COVID being a hoax, there's all a bunch of lies, and it not affect people who may not be so well balanced? What makes us think that it's not going to corrode the political climate? Enough is enough is enough. Every person of good conscience needs to clearly and unambiguously stand up against the violence in our politics, regardless what your politics are. All of us, all of us together as Americans, knowing Paul and Nancy and the families I do, they're tough as they come, but we're praying for them. We're optimistic for his full recovery. Democrats are desperately trying to hold on to their slim majority in Congress. Let's go now to CNN White House reporter Kevin Liptak, who is with President Biden in Wilmington, Delaware. Hi there, Kevin. How is his time on the campaign trail going? Yeah, good morning, Amara. The president, the vice president, they're both trying to sharpen their message here in the closing stretch as Democrats grow increasingly anxious about their prospects. Their closing argument really centers around this warning about what would happen if Republicans were to take the majority in Congress. Of course, the president has focused on official events this campaign season, really trying to highlight his accomplishments. Uh, but there is this persistent frustration among Biden's team that that isn't breaking through to voters. And so in this final stretch, they've made the determination that in addition to arguing for his own accomplishments, he should also be arguing about what the Republican alternative would mean. Yesterday in Philadelphia, he said that this was a refer uh, not a referendum, but a choice between two distinct visions for America. Listen to a little bit of how the vice president framed this last night. Contraception is on the line. Marriage equality is on the line. With Republican Party leaders in charge, health care is on the line. Social Security would be on the line. Medicare would be on the line. Good jobs and fair wages for working families on the line. Now, nowhere is this message more resonant than in Pennsylvania. This was the president's 19th visit to the state. He, of course, uh, was born in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And last night, he pulled up a pant leg and showed a Phillies sock. Of course, they're in the World Series. Uh, now, the president is not on the campaign trail this weekend. His wife, uh, Dr. Jill Biden, will be in New Hampshire. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Maryland. The president uh, does plan to cast his early vote today. Early voting opened in Delaware just yesterday. He'll be accompanied by his granddaughter, Natalie. She turned 18 this year. This will be her first time voting. Guys? And hopefully we will have uh, pool cameras there when the president goes to uh, cast his ballot. Kevin Liptak reporting from Delaware. Thank you so much.
And of course, late campaign twists could have a real impact on three consequential Senate races that will decide whether Democrats remain in control of that chamber. For more on this, joining me now is CNN senior political analyst Ryan Lizza. He's also the chief Washington correspondent for Politico. Ryan, long time. Good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. I, I want to first ask you about Pennsylvania because it, it, I, I, you know, I've heard it pegged often um, by a lot of political analysts as the most important uh, race in the country for several reasons, including the fact that, you know, it, it will shape up to be probably the biggest battleground state uh, in 2024. Do you agree with that and why? Yeah, look, Pennsylvania on the, for the Senate is the sort of uh, uh, the majority maker here. Uh, if if uh, the, the winner of Pennsylvania is um, likely to take control of the United States Senate, and a lot of these uh, Senate races that are the, the key toss-ups right now happen also to be presidential swing states uh, and few as important as, as Pennsylvania. Um, if Joe Biden or whoever the Democrats uh, nominate in 2024 uh, can't win Pennsylvania, they likely don't have a, a path to the, to the presidency. That's at least the way it was in 2020. Um, and the reason all the, you know, the Senate's, the, the Senate and for, for the Senate and for presidential races, voters are more and more voting the same way. You very rarely see these days uh, senators uh, or, or voters vote differently for their statewide Senate candidates uh, than they do for the presidential races. Not that long ago, it was pretty common to, uh, to split those. Now we're approaching a, a country where all 50 states statewide elect one party or the other up and down the bo uh, ballot, yeah, with some important exceptions. Yeah, and, and if you don't mind, if I could jump in there, because I, I do want to ask you about that debate uh, in Pennsylvania, right? I mean, it was obviously very uncomfortable and painful to watch uh, Fetterman on the debate yeah. stage. Yes, he is recovering from a, a stroke. But, I mean, do you think his shaky performance is going to cost Democrats knowing that the Senate, I mean, there are a lot of elderly, I would say almost half, I believe, are in their 70s senators, um, and a lot of them are ailing as well, or some of them are. So is, is that what it's going to come down to, you think, in Pennsylvania? That is a good point. There is this kind of uh, not such a great tradition in the Senate of uh, health issues cropping up with senators late in their career and Senate offices not being very transparent about that. That is a little different than this happening in the, in the middle of an election, of course. And that debate happened just as Oz was creeping up on Fetterman in the polls. So it came at a bad time. Mm. Um, and look, these debates are, 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 voters have come to, we pundits and voters have come to expect debate performance to be one of the criteria that uh, senators should be good at, right? If, w when we elect them. And we see these debates as such an important sort of ritual in a campaign. Um, so, it's, some voters might not understand that his troubles in that debate had nothing to do with his cognitive abilities. Mm. They were just this auditory processing issue, right? That's a complicated thing to get across to, to a lot of voters. Um, but I think the campaign and the media have done a decent job explaining that. And we're in a very polarized environment where not a lot changes these campaigns on one side or the other. So yeah. I think at the end of the day, it has minimal impact. And, and to the race in Georgia, Ryan, I mean, we heard there on the hot mic, uh, you know, Senator Chuck Schumer saying that the uh, the race is going downhill for the Democrats. And he, I think he was referring to, obviously, um, the race between Democrat Senator Raphael Warnock against uh, Republican yep. Herschel Walker. What do you think that race is going to come down to? I mean, do you think people are just going to simply vote along party lines as long as they get a majority in the Senate? I mean, this this is a great example of what we were just talking about or when, when big dramatic events sometimes don't change races or they have the opposite impact than what we think they might. So a lot of Republicans in Georgia are processing the fact that all of this information is coming out about alleged abortions that Herschel Walker paid for despite his uh, uh, swearing that he's, he's uh, pro-life. A lot of Republicans are processing that as, you know, Democratic hits on, on on this guy, and it's reinforcing his base rather than turning Republicans away. Yeah. Um, so who would have thought that those allegations coming out late in the campaign coincide 
with Chuck Schumer saying, hey, the race is slipping away for us, right? Um, we're a polarized environment, and it's, it takes a lot to shake voters on one side or the other sure. off, their, off their preferred party right now. Well, Ryan, it was great to see you. Thank you so much for the conversation.